As far as I guess just this week is concerned with Miami, what's kind of the focal point for you and the offense? Because it seems like the last two weeks you you've had these moments where you've been able to put up points. Man, no, North Carolina was a bit of a slow start, but you did score what twenty eight. Uh, second half points, or was it 21? Either, either, way, know, either way, it was just it was a lot in the second yeah. half. So what do you think is kind of the tempo or message going forward? Oh, uh, the biggest thing is, um, I mean, we had nine, we had the ball nine times uh, against UNC, and we definitely should have scored all, time, all nine times we had the ball. Um, we left too many points in the field. I think the biggest thing going in this game is really executing every chance we get to touch the ball because, you know, knowing who we play, it's limited. You never know what, what plays can be the most important play. So the biggest thing is just making the most of every opportunity we get. It's tough to watch you go back and, and see missed opportunities and how, especially how well you guys moved the ball in the first half to look at the points that were left on the board. Yeah, it's definitely really annoying, especially knowing like it was like one thing here, one thing there, you know, missing just, I mean, I, a couple times like where I had the, we were missed cue on the snap count and stuff like that. Those plays that made such a big difference and like it went from a third and two, third and seven mm -hmm. situation. Just knowing like if we hadn't done those stupid things, if I hadn't done the stupid things, and we just you know, really done our job and stayed focused, then we had so much more opportunities to score. I mean, there was three times in the first half where we were past the 30-yard line and we didn't score, and that's, that's unacceptable. Maybe a positive is at least the offense. A couple weeks in a row, you guys have been moving the ball consistently. Is that something to at least take away, that the ball, at least, at least you're getting, getting good things going there? Yeah, definitely. But like Coach Fisher always says, I mean, um, Nothing's good enough. Mm -hmm. You always want to push for the best and push to be perfect. And, you, and, and on the way to like, being perfect, you might find excellence. So that's what our goal is. From a scheme attack standpoint, is Miami different this year compared to what they've done the last few years when you prepare for them up front? Um, well, this, is definitely, this is actually my first time playing against Miami. I've, um, I, was on, I was on field goal last year when we played against them. But just know, watching them, I know they have a, um, a younger front. Or they have the same two interior guys last year, but their linebackers are all new. But they all play hard. I mean, watching the film, we all you can notice that those guys are all flying out of the ball. They do a lot of lot of um, different things up front. They, they offset guys and stuff. They, they have some some funky fronts. That, uh, we'll take getting used to. We um, just gotta really watch our film and prepare for them. How do you look at anything that Coach Dye is or Coach Cool, the D line coach? Have they done at their previous stops, or do you just look at Miami film? Oh, we definitely look at. Pre we've always done that. You know, look at what they've done. Their defense coordinators have done at other schools because a lot of times they carry on. You know, with the same schemes that they have, they carry those with them. So we do a little research, looking back to, and then look at the film from this year. Alec, what's it like playing next to Kareem? Um, Kareem's always actually since I've been a freshman. Kareem is my big brother. He's always taking care of me, and so just to have him out there next to me is it's a blessing. Cause, you know, he looks out for me, keeps my head on straight, because you know he knows I can get I can get uh, I can get eerie sometimes, and uh, I just love playing next to him. He's always he's such a team player. You know, he's always team first for him. He's always got my back, Rod's back, the right guard, right tackle, no matter who it is, he's always there for us. And um, I know people probably think he's not a leader because he doesn't say much, but in my eyes, Kareem's one of the biggest leaders on our team because he sets an example of how hard you should work because, I mean, that kid pushes himself nonstop, and he really is one of those leaders that leads by example, and then he will talk to who he needs to. And he kind of flies under the radar, um, I think, but he really is a great dude. How did he help kind of did he show you the ropes when you were – Getting Definitely, because he uh, he came in first. Uh, he came in early. He wears the same class technically, but he came in early, and he's older. He's been through a lot more for me. He went to junior college, so he kind of showed me, you know, what I have to do, how I have to get used to dealing with certain things in college, and I have to mature a lot. And he really helped me out, um, and just kept me positive throughout the whole process coming up this past three years. I like um, 2009. You have had Jacoby Harris had a good game uh, last couple of years. James and Brad Kaya, you know, last year did a great job. Um, how important or, or how do you think? DeAndre's kind of taking this week and taking preparation for a big Miami week. Has it been like any other week for him, or you know, has he kind of just uh, try to practice with a little bit more juice and uh, try to be a little bit more attentive? Um, I think that I mean every game to us as a team, the next game is the most important game. So I really think uh, I mean the biggest thing to play a rivalry game like this is you can't let your emotions get the best of you at the beginning of the week. You really got to wait towards the end of the week because you don't want to play the game too early, you know, at least in your head. Mm -hmm. So I think that DeAndre's doing a great job no matter what, he's preparing himself for the game. No matter who the opponent is, he always prepares for the game, always gets ready. And I think when the time comes to, you know, really start getting the emotions going, knowing he's playing Miami, I think that time will come later on in the week. But right now, I think he's doing a great job just getting ready to play the next opponent. We heard Jimbo. We asked Jimbo, talk, we asked Jimbo excuse me, about the storm and just kind of the preparations for all that. and. Is that something you guys have been kind of paying attention to in terms of weather-wise, what's going on down there? Oh, we definitely, yeah, we noticed. I mean, we noticed that there's a hurricane coming right at Miami, and there's actually a second tropical storm going that direction. But we know nothing so far. As far as we know, we're getting ready to play, you know, play Miami. So that's that's the main thing in our 
in our heads, and when we find out something else changes and the coaches let us know. Does it kind of seem like weird that, okay, here's this game and there's a possibility of a hurricane and then your season started with you leaving as a hurricane coming to town? <laughs> it's definitely kind of annoying, I'm not going to lie, because if the power gets knocked out again, that would not be so important. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in a hotel for a couple of days and that happened. So, But I think that, um, I mean, yeah, of course it's on our heads, but we're just trying to, trying to get ready for the game. What did you, go ahead, Jeff. You guys dealt with it the first week of the season. Just how hard is it trying to prepare well, you got a hurricane coming straight at you. Oh, I mean, it was, I mean, when we, when we dealt with it, the power was out. I mean, I'm not going to lie, sitting in the locker room was miserable. Coming to the stadium was miserable. It was hot. A lot of us, I mean, a lot of the guys, we really rely on the food from the fig. And, you know, um, when that was out for a while, we were eating burgers and dogs for a couple of days. I mean, it, it really stinks, I'm not going to lie. But I think it um, honestly, like, really got us down back to the nitty gritty. I think it kind of brought the guys together. You know, some of us were staying with each other. I, I stayed at Sean's house for a couple of days. A bunch of guys did. You know, guys started staying together and really it brought us all together. I think it was kind of cool, honestly. But it's really annoying when the power goes out for that long, especially when you can't watch as much film as you need to. That's the one thing that really brings down. But, I mean, that Thursday through Saturday, that was like a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of game week for you, which that's the midst of preparation is kind of what Miami is going through right now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that uh, really just that whole situation is, is what you make it. You can pout about not having the resources you have, but you can just, you know, get back to it and get on the field and play football. I know that's what we did, and I'm pretty sure that's what we'll do, too. What did Jimbo say to you guys at the end of today's practice? He talked to you guys, it seemed like, for about 20, 25 minutes. Um, well, the big, the main thing, I, mean, I know you probably hate this answer, but uh, when Jimbo talks to us, we try to, what says in the field or what says in the meeting room, we kind of keep that together as a team, so. This may be a stupid question, but when you watch a guy like, a, like Izzo, make a block downfield, or Travis Rudolph make a block. Even though it's not an offensive line doing it every single play, can you appreciate that? Do you like watching that? Um, I've always liked to watch uh, like old school film. Right? It's always kind of inspired me to watch those guys get out there and get after it. And if you notice, man, back in the day, the receivers didn't care who it was, running backs didn't care who it was. They got after it, then we got a block. And to see Travis, I mean, if you watch that film, you watch Travis, he's getting after guys' tails out there. He's blocking his butt off. And so is, too. Bubba is. Kermit, they all are. And to see receivers like that and tight ends get down that field and make blocks and just go hard the whole time, and it means so much just knowing that yeah, they know they're not getting the ball that play, but they have the, the love for the game and love for the team that they're going to push themselves no matter what and get down the field and do their job. Is that something that's starting to become the – kind of the calling card of this offense, the fact you know, a lot of grit and stuff. We've seen that a couple of weeks in a row now. Is that something you guys are kind of leaning Definitely. on? Definitely. We, uh, we all are trying to – We it's awesome to be known as a hard-nosed offense and an offense that's going to get after your tail. And I definitely say that's one of our goals, you know, to be a, a gritty team. I think that's um, something Jimbo really pushes us uh, to be also. So I think that on this track, if we keep at it, I think we can definitely be known for a team like that. Kind of after the game, Dobbin said, you know, the offense did our part, but we can't really put feet into those situations. Um, to really try to hold on to a lead like that. Um, do you guys feel any pressure to, to try to perform faster or try to get into your offense, get into a rhythm a little bit more, you know, especially with the fact that you, know, you guys lost the game in, in the fashion you lost it? I mean, the main thing is we just got to do our jobs. We, we left, as offense, we left too many points in the field. Uh, we just got to take advantage of our opportunities. Every opportunity we get the ball, we have to take advantage of it and get points. And if we don't get a point, or some sort of points, and that's that's our fault. So I mean, it's it's not the defense's fault that we left touchdowns on the field. Mm -hmm. They they do their job. We have to do our jobs. Now, dating back to last year, you guys are seven and five in your last twelve. I mean, how do you try to regain that confidence that you guys had at the beginning of last year, and also when you guys won twenty eight out of twenty nine? Um, I mean, the biggest thing is taking the next game on. You know, what I'm saying you can't look back in the past too much. You need to look forward. Look to the next game. Execute the next game. You can't, like Coach Fisher always says, you can't control the scoreboard. So all we can do is control how we play. If we go out there and play hard on offense and defense, and do what we need to do, then we're going to win games. And you know what? We're going to next week going to play hard on offense and defense and special teams, and we're going to win that game. And just, all we can do is just keep playing our game and play, play, keep playing hard. And then, if the, I mean, if it turns out, it turns out. All we can do is control how we play. And if we play hard, then it should turn out the right way.